Hey, so we need to go over the oscoxae so you can figure out the parts of it, right? So there are three bones that make up this. And you probably need to know if it's a left or a right. And we need to go over the structures that are listed in your lab manual for this. So there's a couple things you can do. One of the things you can do is if you um, think about it as this notch right here being inferior, then you would place it this way. And after that, anything on this side is posterior and anything on the socket side is anterior. From that point, you should be able to drop it down on your own body, make this point to the back of your body and this point to the front, and you would realize that, okay, this one right here, when it drops straight down, it's on the right side of my body. So this is a right. The other thing you can do is if you look at this as an eye socket and this as a nostril, the eye socket would need to be superior and slightly lateral to the nostril. And so this would be the correct positioning for this bone. Another thing somebody has told me is that it reminds them of a Mardi Gras mask. So if you take this and you were to put it over your face and look through it like a mask, it would need to go on this side of the head. It would be a right. So let's go over the structures that you have to know and the three bones that make it up. So there's three bones. You have the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. The pubis is going to be a V-shaped bone. So it forms right here. And you would have one on the right. And then if you had a left one, you would have a V-shaped bone here too. And that would help form this pubic arch or pubic angle. This is one of the ways that you can identify if this is a male or a female. So the pubic arch or the pubic angle among females, it's about 120 degrees or 110 degrees or greater. And among men, it's about 90 degrees or less. The greater sciatic notch here is more narrow in men. And it's a lot wider in females. And so there's a couple other things that we can look at too, but those are two just on this bone. So you have the pubis here. All right. So each of the three bones is going to make up a third of the socket. Pubis ischium, ilium. That's what's making this up. The structures you have to know. The first one is the socket itself. The socket is known as your acetabulum or acetatubulum. It's that A-C-E word. So A-C-E. That's this one. If you start here, make it a landmark and work your way around this bone. So from the socket, you would come this way, right? You're on the pubic bone. Um, what you will find is that if it's a ramus, it makes a straight area. So if you think back to your mandible, you have the angle and then the mandible comes up and you're at the ramus before you get to those two processes here. Same thing here. So you have a straight part here on top of the O hole. You have a straight part here below the O-hole, right? So from here, we are on top, top. Anatomically, what do we call it? It's superior. So this is my superior pubic ramus. I'm now at the pubic body. There is a hump here. That's my pubic tubercle, right? That's where your rectus abdominis, your abs tie in. If you flip over to the side here, this is where some cartilage would attach. It's fibrous cartilage, fibrocartilage. That's going to be your pubic symphysis coming down here. We are on the bottom of this O-hole. So we are at the inferior pubic ramus. This whole time we've been going around this O-hole, I call it an O-hole, not an A-hole. It's an O-hole. And that's because it's obturator for a human. Obturator. Starts with an F. Looking on the back here, you have a large hump. Many times, if it's a hump on the bone, it's going to start with the letter T. Those things are like tuberosities, tubercles, trochanters, right? Sometimes those T names are also named after the bone that they're on. So in this case, 
This is your ischial tuberosity. You're going to come up. You're going to see your greater sciatic notch. Right? It's greater because you have a big one here. You have a lesser here that you don't have to know for this lab. But this is your greater sciatic notch. Come on back. We are on the back side of the bone, remember? This is all posterior. Everything here is posterior. So we're posterior. There is a spine here and a spine here. You are on the ilium. This spine is on top of this spine. So this one and this one. Closer to the greater sciatic notch. This is going to be your inferior. It's posterior, so you call it your posterior inferior. Name the bone, iliac, and it's a spine. So this one is your posterior inferior iliac spine. This one is your posterior superior iliac spine. This is your iliac crest. When you're at these posterior spines, if you look, all right, you see this kind of triangular shape? It looks kind of like a seven though. Can you see that? It comes up here and over this way, all right? If you looked at the other video that I have on the axial skeleton, you would have seen that I've discussed a seven before. And that was on this guy. Remember this one? This is the sacrum. And you see how it has that number seven too? All right. So the way this works is that they're gonna fit together like this. So where this seven is and where this seven shape is, that's gonna end up forming your sacroiliac joint. So that's your SI joint, articulation for your SI joint. This is articulation for your SI joint, or the surface for your sacroiliac joint. Iliac crest, then you have a spine and a spine. We are on the front side, remember? This is gonna to go to the front. So this one's on top, this one's on the bottom. So it's anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, and then we're right back to the socket. You're done with this bone. Pretty simple. All right, see you guys later.